Brian, and I'd like to mention that the plan here is for you to have a, an opportunity to ask questions to each of the students after they speak, if that's all right. I also need to mention that Jada Block, who was the first person on your sheet there, after I printed it out last night, wrote and said that she is ill and was not able to be with us. So that's why we started with Tanisha. If you have questions for Tanisha, feel free. Sure. Tanisha, has this inspired you to be more involved actively with this particular topic? Actually, you know what, it really has. Um, I noticed last night when I was practicing my speech, I was like, well, I can't, I kind of sound passionate about this topic. So maybe I should further look into it and get involved with some of the water issues. Is there any other questions? Sure. Uh, Youth are now being involved in the World Water Forum and the, the, the sixth World Water Forum is coming up next year. You might look into that and, and uh, see if you can get a free trip to uh, Madrid. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <coughs> what are your comments about drinking water from the tap and buying bottled water? Well, um, I had a friend that recently told me that the tap water we have been drinking is not as clean as we think it is, obviously, and um, that it's being, it's really polluted lately. And also with bottled water that the plastic, the squishy plastic is harmful to our health. So bottled water is just as bad as tap water. I don't know which one's better. <laughs> Price is a big consideration. Any other questions? Do filters sell much? Filters. Filters? Yes. I think water is, water is one of these topics that we, if we start looking at it, we see all kinds of news. The Economist had an article very recently suggesting that water may be the major battleground for the next 50 years, that between India and China alone, there are all kinds of seeds of discord and, and conflict because of the possibility of building new dams and sediment building up and some of the major rivers being blocked or reduced in their, in their flow. So it is certainly a significant problem. Our second speaker is going to be Vanessa Anderson. Vanessa has a background of her own as an international traveler. We will enjoy learning from her. I have a couple of comments that her colleagues in the class told me about her. Vanessa was described as clear and articulate, which is very true. She has a secret rock star personality. She is very prompt at responding to texts, which is an important part of new culture today, as you know. People don't write long dispositions anymore. They don't even use email. That's too passe. But texts are in, and Vanessa is someone who uses them well. She is smart and knowledgeable. I can attest to that. She's elegant, eloquent and elegant, and she is a go-getter. So, Vanessa Anderson with International Studies. different 
certain um, points that they like to hit on the three main The three main ones are, first off, it increases your language skills. Obviously, we can sit in front of the computer and learn our resin stone. But <laughs> once you actually get immersed in a culture, it's so much easier to actually learn a language. And, you know, it kind of forces you when you have to ask where the bathroom is. <laughs> um, the second one is it improves your decision-making and problem-solving skills. Um, you know, when you're studying the ride, you find yourself in these situations all the time. And you have to know how to maneuver through that uncharted territory. And um, those skills are transferable in both your personal and professional life. So the last one is that you are going to obviously make new contacts. You're going to network. You can network with the families you're staying with, with the uh, people surrounding your educational experience, the people you meet there. There's just so many different things that you're going to meet and those people you can use for the rest of your life. So also there's benefits in your personal life, not just educational, obviously. So the biggest one I think is that you're going to gain a new perspective on this world. I know this just happens for me with my trips. You know, you go on these trips and your entire perspective changes. For me, the biggest one was education. You know, before I went on these trips, um, I was 14 the first trip. And before I was like, oh, I have to go to school. I hate school. I goes. And afterwards, I realized what a privilege it was to be able to go to school and to have all these opportunities to learn. And now being able to go to college and get my degree, I realize just how much of a privilege is and how much a lot of people take it for granted. So that was the biggest one for me. So I am the benefits and now we're going to move on to why I chose to do these trips. So my mother pulled me out of school when I was in third grade and decided to homeschool me. And she set the guidelines for me to be able to graduate high school. Um, all I had to do was finish all these guidelines and then I could graduate, didn't matter how old I was. So one of these requirements was that I had to visit at least two third world nations. She was a little bit out of the box and I didn't quite appreciate it at the time, but now I definitely do. <laughs> so I decided to visit Guatemala and Africa. And the first one, um, I was trying to get the requirements done. <laughs> you know, I had to get through my list. So Guatemala was um, an eye-opening experience. First off, I had to raise all the money to go on these trips. That was part of it. So I was doing everything under the sun <laughs> to raise the money for these trips. And then once I got there, um, you know, I was doing, uh, it's only a month, how much can this possibly be worth? You know, I worked for a year to be able to go on this. And, yeah, <laughs> was it worth it? But I will move on to it. Um, the second trip, I really wanted to go. That's kind of when my perspective on her list changed. The second trip was the African trip. I went to Ghana, Africa, and it was, Amazing. Um, it was even better than the first one. I think because I kind of knew what um, I was getting myself into that time. I knew that I really wanted to go, how much this was going to change me. So now I'm going to actually tell you about the trips. The first one, I went to a remote village. When I say remote, I mean remote village. <laughs> Guatemala after. Guatemala. Um, I cannot remember the name of the leg of me. Spanish is never my strong suit. I've tried to learn about four times. But <laughs> I can't remember the name of the village. It was a month-long trip, like I said before. We visited the schools. We got to actually learn in the schools, which was very, um, very eye-opening. It's completely different from any school here. They have one room that they teach um, all the different grades in. And the thing with that one was that obviously it was only Spanish. <laughs> so, you know.
know, you kind of have to, um, you kind of have to try to figure out what they're saying from hand gestures and going back to the problem solving. Deco had to do a lot of that. And we also visited um, their hospitals, uh, medical clinics, um, just different villages. Uh, we went into their churches, their government buildings. And um, I remember one church that we went to. I didn't understand a word of it, but it was, it was a lot of fun. They were all like dancing around. And I've been going to church my entire life, and that was unlike anything I've ever seen. I'll never forget that one. And so now we move on to the bed, which was my secret favorite. I'm supposed to like both of them, but. I went to Ghana, Africa. It was a 32 hour flight. It's a long flight. Very long flight. And um, once we got there, we stepped off the plane with the instant crunch. It's 100% humidity and it's 116 degrees outside. <laughs> but once you actually got into it, it was great. Now, the thing with that one was that they actually speak some English, at least the children do. Because in the schools they're taught English, it's heavily accented in English, but it's English nonetheless. So going into their schools and actually getting taught in English was incredibly interesting. And there they have such a high value for education. You know, parents will work their entire lives just to see their kids be able to go to school. And it was that was inspiring for me to see um, the dedication that they have. You never hear a kid there say, oh, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. They all say, I want to be a doctor. I want to go to university, and I'm going to get my degree. And it's, it's incredibly inspiring. So now that I have talked about the benefits of international study, the why I chose to go on these trips and explain to you what I did on these trips. I am going to read you a book by John Dewey. It says, education is not the preparation for life. Education is life. Too many 